The challenges facing our community are very complex, and there's no way that one person or one organization can single-handedly address some of the challenges that we face as a community. The Denver Foundation plays a role, but our role is really to help connect the many people from throughout the community who together can help us successfully improve life in Metro Denver. The two stories that you're going to see are but two of literally countless examples of people from our community coming together to help make this a better place to live. There are people from all different walks of life, from all sectors, the public sector, the private sector, the nonprofit sector. There are people with many different assets and skills and attributes. And these stories illustrate just some of the many ways that people in Metro Denver are working together to make our community better. There's a few characteristics in a good community organizer. Um, sometimes they're described as people going around setting people on fire. They will uh, get involved and really inspire other people. So oftentimes organizers are not only developing leaders, they're also uh, teaching leaders to develop other leaders. The reason it's important to get youth involved in community organizing is that oftentimes adults have been doing for rather than with uh, youth. So schools and crime are big issues in the neighborhoods and oftentimes uh, students and youth are finding out what we're, what's the plan for them later. They're really not at the table. I got involved in, in community organizing when I was about a sophomore in high school. And I remember the first issues that we were working on were the bathrooms. Uh, first got enticed with free pizza and once we started to actually go through the process, uh, our first issue was the uncleanliness and unsanitary bathrooms that we had in the school. We got to learn the process through that. Uh, and then we started to work on larger and larger issues. We were also beginning to fund Metro Organizations for People, MOP, in a large way. They traditionally only worked with adults in churches, and so here was an opportunity for them to start working in schools and to start working with youth. And they, you know, hit it out of the ballpark. They met a Blanca and said, hey, not only is she making changes at West High School, but as she's graduating from high school, she still wants to be involved. Being involved with MOP has been a great experience for me because I've learned skills through the process uh, from my organizer, and from the people of MOP, that I would never have learned in the classroom. In Blanca's work, oftentimes uh, we'll go into a school and the really active student will just come right up to us and they're in charge of the student body, they're in charge of many things. And then Blanca also said, you know, I noticed that there's some other kids here who are involved in other ways or maybe having some problems in the school. Why don't we invite them to the meeting? Um, I think Blanca is unique in not only looking at the usual leaders and developing them, but really reaching out to the others. An important lesson in Blanca's story is that uh, meeting a seven-year-old who's following their parents to a leadership meeting is, is one thing, uh, but also asking that uh, young person later on if they're interested in being involved is, is I think, a lesson. I've heard a lot of adults say that, that young people are apathetic, uh, and I think to some extent adults, we, we get that way also. We get jaded uh, to the realities of the world, and, uh, and I think it's really important to keep, to keep that compassion, to keep that caring. Uh, and, and to not lose it and to not be afraid of it also, to not be afraid to care because things might not always turn out the way that you want. You know, I think it's really important to keep that passion uh, and that, that caring. Food pantries in the Denver area also getting some much needed money thanks to the Denver Foundation. The economy is being felt in a place, the tough economy, in a place you might not expect, and that is Santa's laps. This year, for the first time, I had several kids ask for food. Today, the foundation kicked off its critical needs fund to help agencies that help the most vulnerable in our society. Hunger relief effort specifically, this time that we've mobilized the Critical Need Fund, is a part of a larger commitment from the Denver Foundation 
to serving the most vulnerable in our community. Uh, it's something that is, is very important to us and something that has been important to us since we were founded over 80 years ago. Well, the response of the donor community to this call to action was just phenomenal. Our private donors were incredibly generous, our donor advisors, uh, our sister foundations in the community were great. The Denver Foundation, I think, put together a program very quickly. They got the news out to the, the community very, very quickly. The information was very succinctly presented, and it was a good plea. It, 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 it really touched my heart. And at the time, I was very busy with my company. At the end of the year, we were, we were booming. And I didn't have the time to do this myself, but I knew it was a need. And the Denver Foundation just jumped right in, sent me the information right at that right moment. And I was very willing to just open my fund up and, and put some money into the Critical Needs Fund. We made 81 emergency grants in the first round of funding, and we know we'll be making more. From deadline day to the day checks went out the door, it was 12 days. So we really uh, worked through the weekend to get these funds out as quickly as we possibly could. We're hearing some feedback now from grantee organizations, from these frontline food pantries that um, help families and children and the elderly with emergency food. And this has really made a huge difference at a critical time. It's good to be able to, to know that we've made a real concrete difference in people's lives. So there are lots of frontline agencies on which we really depend to help the most vulnerable. Agencies like Project Angel Heart, which get food to people who are ill and unable to leave their homes in some cases. And you multiply that by dozens of agencies and you start to get a sense of the impact that a program like this has. The Denver Foundation has always generously provided for Project Angel Heart, and that in turn allows us to serve more people. So even with the increased food costs that we're seeing and increased operating costs, our goal this year is to serve at least as many clients in 2009 as we did in 2008, and that is truly made possible by the grant that we received from the Denver Foundation. Project Angel Heart was one of 10 local nonprofit organizations that participated in our nonprofit internship program during the 2008 summer. Jordan Bear was a junior at Metro State College of Denver. She was majoring in political science and social work. She was very excited about the opportunity to have an internship during the summer because it would be an opportunity where she could continue and deepen her involvement in the sector. Jordan was different than other interns just because of the high level of professionalism, drive, and passion that she brought. It was tremendous the work that she did for us. She took our fundraising to a higher level. She was really involved with our events. She helped, she coordinated our AIDS Walk event. She wrote a grant and basically Jor with Jordan the answer was always yes. We asked her to step up more and more and more and the answer was always yes. So it, it really helped us raise more money last year. She was a tremendous gift. What I would encourage donors to do is continue to support the food pantries in their community and beyond that continue to uh, support and advocate for people who are less fortunate and find out ways that they can become involved in the overall issue of food insecurity and poverty. Christmas is a time of year when everybody gives. It's not Christmas, it's now spring and summer and fall. Food needs don't go away. People are hungry. The economy is bad. People are losing their jobs. The foundation just needs to keep this in the forefront of all of us donors so that we see it and can throw money into that direction. It's, it's the community. It's the people I walk down the street with that, that are hungry and need food, and, I, and I'm so willing to, to support them in that. These are very tough economic times and everyone is struggling in their own way. But no matter how things are for us, there are many people in our community who are finding it even more difficult than we are. And that makes it incumbent upon all of us who do have jobs and do have some resources to dig a little deeper during these tough times and to be as generous as we possibly can, both with our dollars and with our time. If you can't give a lot of money, then think about volunteering your time for many of the wonderful, wonderful nonprofit organizations in our community who are serving people throughout Metro Denver.